All right, ladies and gentlemen, I saw this clip going around on Twitter. I honestly wasn't going to make a video on this, but then I realized something. We need to talk about this. And the reason why is because, oh my God, is this absolutely so cringe to the point where we are now trying to make robots and mechs have pronouns, ladies and gentlemen. This is the level of representation, superficial representation that people are willing to take from Hollywood and game developers, et cetera, et cetera. They're looking to take this level of representation. It just goes to show how unbelievably pathetic the whole DEI movement has become. Hands. Are we the baddies? So we have an article here from That Park Place with a headline that reads, newly released Jennifer Lopez Netflix film features a robot lecturing her about pronouns. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I saw this clip going around on Twitter. It is the, if you can think about maximum level cringe, then go past that. That's exactly what that clip was. And you know what? This movie is bombing as expected. The reviews are terrible. Even from the critics, it's terrible. And when you lose the critics, the shills, oh, I don't know what you're going to do at that point. So let's get into this article, guys, from that park place. But of course, before we do, if you are new here, just consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it and like the video to push us out into that YouTube algorithm. It says Netflix's newly released science uh, fiction film, Starring Jennifer Lopez called Atlas features an AI robot that lectures Lopez's characters about pronouns. Former Canadian TV executive turned YouTuber Paul Chato shared a clip from the film that features the robot lecturing Lopez after she properly refers to it as it. Now, again, it is the proper pronoun, right? Like it's a fucking robot. It's not it's not gendered or anything. Uh, but of course, they're trying to make a statement with this particular thing. And the sad thing is that this clip I'm about to play for you. This clip only exists because we are in modern day. You know what I mean? Like, this is the prime example of what it literally means to inject identity politics into places that it doesn't belong. I don't know of anybody that will be excited, truthfully, about having a robot use she, her pronouns. I don't know of anybody that will look at that and say, yup, this is fantastic representation for the LGBTQ community, and I am so happy to see myself in a fucking, what, 10,000 pound mech? Like, it doesn't make any sense, but let me, uh, uh, let me play this clip so you guys can get a better understanding. Here we go. Oh, okay then. Wait, how did it know I wanted coffee? I'm sorry, but my pronouns are she and her, not it. Now, again, uh, I hope you had your cringe suit on because that was that was a little rough. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> oh, my God. What kind of clown world are we living in? I just don't understand the maximum levels of cringe that Hollywood is willing to go to just to adhere to 2% or 1% of the fucking population. It just doesn't make sense. But listen, hey, if that is what was important, if you were so desperate to animate this robot because you had to pay to animate it, right? You had to pay to animate it and make sure she lectured Jennifer Lopez in that five to seven seconds about pronouns. That is your representation. That's what you're happy about. This is what you're going to tout as a success. This is what you're going to go all over Twitter and try to pretend like you're seen now because of it. Yeah, needless to say, I have more faith in you than to buy that bullshit, okay? I flat out think that you are lying if you are trying to use this as any sort of representation win. It's the same people who are running around right now trying to use Vivian in Paper Mario being trans as some sort of a win, right? Like, if that's the level of representation you are willing to accept as a win, then your life is way more pathetic than I initially thought it was. And I already didn't have much faith in it as it was, but that is next level pathetic if that's the case. It says the film, which released on May 24th, has been firmly rejected by both critics and viewers, and it's not surprising given this clip. Clearly, the film is infected with the woke ideology. Now, I don't know if it's anywhere else in the film, but I really don't care, to be honest with you, because number one, I'm not going to watch a J-Lo film. I just really don't give a shit. And number two, uh, if you are going to make a seven second clip with pronouns from a mech, whether or not you have woke this in the rest of the film doesn't matter to me. I already can see where the mindset was for the writers and the people who made this film, and I'm already checked out. That clip is enough for me to be like, yep, I don't even have to bother. I can have literally 0% interest and not give a fuck. I just don't care. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an abysmal 17%. 
On the tomato meter from critics, out of 59 reviews, mind you, at the time, there are only 10 fresh scores and 49 rotten ones. It has an average rating of 3.9 out of 10. It also has a 56% rotten score from viewers with an average rating of 3.2 out of 5. You know, it's actually incredible to me to see the difference in shill movies, right? When uh, when the reviewers are paid and not paid, right? Like you can kind of see when reviewers are paid, right? Because they'll give it like a 100% score. It'd be so obvious or or 99% score. They'll give a movie a perfect score, even though it's a fucking terrible film and it's infested with wokeness. But when you have a woke film that hasn't paid out the reviewers, yeah, they're going to be pretty damn uh, ruthless with you because they're going to want to make sure that you pay them next time. And a 17% score, I mean, even the audience score is 56%. But here's the thing with the audience score. It's a filtered score, right? So the audience score, uh, it only shows a certain amount based off what's verified or what's allowed by Rotten Tomatoes. And they will always try to maintain an above 50% score. That's usually how they try to do it, 50 to 60%. They never really want the movie to go below 50%. And if it does, that just means there's so many negative reviews. It's just impossible to uh, to fuck with the numbers, basically. But in this case, 56% still considered slightly above average. Uh, this movie is definitely not doing any anywhere near the numbers you know they probably thought they were going to do by shilling for trans people or shilling for lgbtq people it is pathetic man it really is and at a certain point when are we going to admit that we need to talk business right and i said this with doctor who there's no way that you can be happy with this performance and say well yeah no no this is this is success we're, we're super successful we're super happy couldn't be happier you know what i mean and they're so used to failing upward they never want to admit that they're wrong it says the film is not faring better on IMDb. It currently has a 5.6 out of 10 from over 6,000 reviews. So it looks like the same exact thing. 5.6 out of 10 is the same as 56% out of 100%. So same exact thing, not too surprising. The official description for the film from Netflix states that Atlas Shepard, Jennifer Lopez, a brilliant but misanthropic data analyst with a deep distrust of artificial intelligence, joins a mission to capture a renegade robot with whom she shares a mysterious past. But when plans go awry, uh, her only hope of saving the future of humanity Humanity from AI is to trust it. Again, I I don't even know, man. I do. Do we even care? That's the thing. Like, do we even care at the end of the day what this fucking thing is trying to do? Because if again, if you are going to be happy with representation uh, representation in robots. I don't know what more I can say to you to try to help you free your mind. That's the problem. I don't know what more I can say. You are accepting the most superficial, basic form of representation. We're talking about the laziest form. Somebody at this table that they sat at when they thought of this film said, hey, the film is done. Now, where can we squeeze representation into it? Oh, I know. Let's make the robot talk about pronouns for five seconds. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's roll with it. Let's animate a whole new scene just specifically for these stupid fucking pronouns. And that's where we are at at the end of the day. So regardless, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're going to watch this movie or not, doesn't matter to me. All I know is this is where we're at with modern day Hollywood. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.